Good afternoon, Tony Dottino, uh, founder, chairman of the USA Memory Championship. Uh, back on land after a seven-day Disney cruise that uh, had lots of kids on it. They were almost at uh, 2,000 kids. I guess this was Easter week and a bad time to travel if you uh, wanted to avoid a couple of thousand kids, but certainly an enjoyable cruise as they do have an adult section uh, on the cruise ship that we spent most of our time at and yet enjoyed the laughing and the playing of kids. So it's always an enlightening thing, especially as a senior, to watch kids and the fun they do, the things they say, and uh, how they go about uh, enjoying themselves. Uh, got to some ports. Uh, people ask, where did, where did we get to go? And uh, we started our cruise uh, with a day at sea, which was just lovely, and brought crossword puzzles and Sudokus and things, and so I spent some time just just kind of sailing away. The seas were great. We had a good good week in terms of seas. And uh, on the first uh, port of arrival was Cozumel. And so uh, that was interesting in itself. Lots of good shops there, except when you see the uh, army guards with the machine guns and uniforms, you say, okay, this is probably not a good place to be walking along. And we got to Grand Cayman, uh, we did Jamaica, and then, of course, the Disney Island. And so... Uh, Back to the the port we went uh, Saturday morning, and uh, we pick up my Sunday newspaper, and uh, it had a very, really great insert. It's got to be one of the best inserts you could find uh, in a newspaper, and well put together, and it really carved out a number of things for optimum health. Anyway, it's from uh, se rural seniors that benefit from remote fitness, Guide to Starting a Strength Training Program, uh, The World of Telehealth, which uh, many, many people are doing over these last few years and making a difference in their health, uh, alcohol and your heart. Uh, but there are a couple here I want to talk about today. Could it be love or f uh, pheromones? I don't know what that is. Being optimistic. Here's the first one. Being optimistic may reduce the risk of health conditions. And the second one is three ways to emotionally refill. How do you emotionally refill? So I wanted to read a bit on both of those since these are two things that as we do the Brain Fitness Academy, as Michael Bautino and his co colleague uh, Catherine, we go about working with a group of seniors uh, that are working on their mental health. Uh, the first one that they do, and is an exercise they do, is called the Gratitude Journal. And I, Bill brings me back to something I've worked on for years called GIG. Garbage in, garbage grows, or good in, good will grow, depending on your own personal synergy. And here the article starts off as, when you think about the future, do you expect good or bad things to happen? If you weigh it in on the good side, you're an optimist. That has a positive implication on your health. Studies have shown that a strong association between higher levels of optimism and a reduced risk of conditions such as heart disease, stroke, and cognitive impairment. All three of those grab my interest, but for today we'll talk about cognitive impairment. Studies have linked optimism with greater longevity. Well, I want to live to be at least 100, and I'm doing all the things I can, but what people have said in surveys that were done over and over again, I have no reason to live longer than what my mental cognitive fitness can take me. I want to be able to, to know the people I speak to and have them recognize who I am as well as me recognize who they are, and so it's important for my desire to live along healthy and do all of the right things, that I have my mental abilities. One of the latest published studies comes from the uh, Harvard Public Health collaboration with colleges and other universities. It found that older women who scored highest on measures of optimism lived 4.4 years longer than those with lower scores. Why does optimism make such a difference? Experts advance various explanations. People who are optimistic cope better with challenges of life and are less likely to experience stress than people with less positive attitudes. Now, I'm not sure that I know anybody who is uh, immune to not having stress. 
in their lives, but how do you build resilience? So it's one of the things we've discovered in our Maximum Memory Mastery course, but more importantly in the six key factors of brain health that we have in our online uh, uh, courses. And one of them is, talks about the importance of stress and how we have resilience. How do we bounce back from stress? So here it says, okay, if you experience stress, then people with less positive. Well, we're all going to experience stress at some point in our lives, but how do we view it? How do we bounce back? What do we do? Do we go read? Do we go take some time off? You know, how do we recover from a period of stress? And so that brings us to the second article that's in here, and that was, how do we build back our emotional resilience? So what do we do? How do we refill emotionally? And so the first time the thing it says is you want to make sure you have time for yourself, where you get these periods of just being 15 minutes to just yourself a couple of times a day where you just kind of like just let things go and you just reflect on maybe it's looking at nature, maybe it's looking at flowers or pictures. They find pictures are helpful. Commit yourself to better health. A strong body helps balance the stressful situations that have caused your burnout. The basic recipe for good health includes exercising. The kind that works the heart and lungs releases chemicals that regulate mood, sleep, and many body systems, especially your brain. Now why? Because your brain is consuming about 20% of the oxygen we are taking in that is firing that, those thoughts and those memories and the things that make a creative mind continue to work. It help, and, and so it helps to regulate your mood, sleep, and body systems. Aim for at least 22 minutes a day or 150 minutes a week of strength or exercise or walking. And walking is, is just as good, so it's a good thing. It doesn't have to be fancy. It can be a movement that brings you joy. And that's the next part. I always remember a seminar going to it says, and you have to like what you're doing so that your brain and your body are absorbing it in a very positive way so that there's a positive nature to it. <clears throat> uh, it can be movement, okay. A good diet, so eating, that's how we get the, the biology that goes in our brain, eating lots of junk food, of sugar, salt, and unhealthy saturated fats fuels stress, fatigue, depression, anxiety, all of the things that are detrimental for long-term mental fitness and health. Cooking healthy foods you have several times a week, throw in vegetables. We hear more and more of that. Next comes the next one, and these are all included in our uh, six key factors of brain health. So I found this is extremely interesting to read this here in our Sunday newspaper. Next, sleep. Insufficient sleep affects your overall health, concentration, and mood, and your brain functions. Our brain during our sleeping periods of time are cleansing out some of the toxins that, that build up. And there's a period during our sleep where the brain is actually working to clean those toxins out. Some that are found to produce uh, cognitive impairments. And so having the right amount of sleep. And then surround yourself with comfort. I mean, I could go on with the sleep, try to sleep you know, seven to nine hours, got that. But let's go. Uh, a, a concept of happiness and contentment. So surround yourself with comfort. Surround yourself with people and activities and things that make you feel loved, happy, content. Spend time with your favorite people. Now, maybe you want to add a vase of flowers. I don't know. See your space. I, I like to buy flowers. Yeah. I look at flowers in the grocery stores and I look for a mix of color. There's something about color that just brings a vibrance to the brain and a vibrance to your eyes and a vibrance to this life. And uh, Put, put slippers on at home, eat a treasured comfort food, or listen to f favorite music. And there are times I, when I'm doing house chores and things, I put on uh, uh, my 70s music. I'm a big 70s music person. But here are a couple other things that you might want to try. Um, frame a photo and have it posted of a happy time. Treat yourself and have your breakfast in bed. I'm not sure what there is. I might, I'm going to have to try that one. I don't, I don't do it. I haven't done it. But boy, it's an interesting concept. Use pretty table linens. Wow, who thinks about what you eat on as something? And so, again, that's something I've been uh, uh, aware of in the past. 
where I want to look at what the tablecloth looks like that I'm eating on, and it brings about a pleasant attitude, a pleasant mood uh, to yourself. Uh, stand outside and listen to the sounds of nature. My goodness, do I love to do that. We have uh, a nice backyard here. Uh, I think I've shared it with you in the past. It uh, looks out on bunches. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that today. There we go. It looks out on trees, and then to the left of the trees is a nice pond. Uh, saw a panther out there this morning. It's like, whoa, I'm not going out there today, but there was a panther on the far end of the pond. But nature, we continue to find out more and more about what nature does for us and the impact that it has on our lives. So spending some time, and even they're finding pictures of nature are equally rewarding and beneficial, just sitting and meditating and looking at pictures. So my meditation is sitting out on our back porch and I just listen to the sounds of nature and the birds and what's cricking in the forest and the woods and it all works. So there's my return to earth for you today. It was really terrific that here in our Sunday newspaper, they had this fabulous section insert, which I will clearly keep, absolutely keep it. It really is terrific. Uh, and it ties into what I did last week on what are some of the, the plants that you might want to have in your house that help do the purification and detoxification of uh, toxins in the body and the brain. So with that, you have a good day. It's off to a new week. And my goodness, uh, the post office was quite crowded today as we are filing our taxes for the year 2022. And off we go into the year 2023. And we shall see you again on Wednesday.